Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem called range product queries of powers. It sounds a little complicated, but don't worry. We're going to break it down into simple, manageable steps. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the official problem description. To put it simply, we're given a number, called n, and a list of queries. Each query is just a pair of numbers, a left and a right index. Our main job has two parts. First, we need to figure out a special array based on n. Then, for each query, we use that array to calculate a result. Let's dive into what that special array is all about. The first piece of the puzzle is creating this powers array. The description is key. It's the smallest set of powers of two that add up to our number n. This is a classic clue that points directly to binary numbers. Let's take n equals 15. In binary, that's four ones. Each one in the binary string tells us which power of two we need. Counting from the right, we need a two to the power of zero, a two to the power of one, and so on. This gives us the numbers one, two, four, and eight. So our powers array for 15 is simply one, two, four, eight. Once we've built that powers array, the second part of the job is to handle the queries. Each query gives us a left and a right index. Our task is to go to our powers array, take the slice from that left index to the right index, and multiply all those numbers together. Because the product can get huge, we need to apply a modulo operation to keep the numbers in check. Let's walk through the full example from the problem. Our n is 15, so as we figured out, the powers array is 1, 2, 4, 8. Now let's take the first query, 0, 1, protois. This means we multiply the elements at index 0 and index 1 of our powers array, that's 1 times 2, which is 2. Easy enough. The next query is 2, 2, break, that just means we take the element at index 2, which is 4. And finally, 0, 3, means we multiply everything from index 0 to 3, which gives us 64. And that's it. Our final answer is the list of these results, 2, 4, and 64. All right, let's talk about our first approach. This one is the most direct and intuitive way to solve it. We'll just follow the steps we laid out. First, we'll write some code to generate that powers array from n. Then, for every single query we get, we'll run a simple loop from the left index to the right index, multiplying the numbers from the powers array as we go. It's a direct translation of the problem into code. Here's what that looks like in Python. Don't worry, we'll break it down. You can see two main parts. The first part builds the powers array and the second part loops through the queries to calculate the products. Let's focus on the first part, building the powers array. We loop from 0 to 29, because 2 to the power of 30 is bigger than the maximum possible value of n. Inside the loop, we use a neat bitwise trick, shifting n to the right by i-spots, and then a n d i n it with 1, is a super fast way to check if the bit at position i is turned on. If it is, that means we need this power of 2, so we calculate it and add it to our list. One left shift i is just a fast way of saying 2 to the power of i. Now for the second part, where we handle the queries. This is pretty straightforward. We loop through each query. For each one, we start a new product, initializing it to 1. Then, a nested loop runs from the left to the right index. Inside this loop, we multiply our running product by the current power. The most important detail here is that we apply the modulo after every single multiplication. If we wait until the end, the number could become astronomically large, so we keep it small at every step. That first approach works just fine. But, you might notice that we're doing a lot of repeated work if queries overlap. This hints that we can probably optimize. This brings us to a very powerful technique for range queries, called prefix products. The idea is to do some work up front to make the queries themselves lightning fast. We'll create a new helper array, let's call it prefix underscore products. Each element in this new array will store the running product of the powers array up to that point. Let's see how this works. If our powers array is 1, 2, 4, 8, our prefix underscore products array would be 1. Then 1 times 2 is 2. Then 2 times 4 is 8. And finally, 8 times 8 is 64. Now if we want the product for a range, say from index 1 to 3, we could take the prefix product at index 3, which is 64, and divide it by the prefix product at index 0, right before our range started. This would give us 64 divided by 1, which is 64. That's the correct answer for the product of 2, 4, and 8. But, there's a catch. In modular arithmetic, you can't just divide, 
you have to multiply by something called the modular inverse. Here is the code for the prefix product approach. It starts the same way by building the powers array. Then, it creates the prefix underscore products array. The final part is the query loop, which now, instead of another loop, does a few lookups and uses Python's power function to handle that tricky modular inverse calculation. Let's look at the pre-computation step. We create our prefix underscore products array, but we make it one element larger than the powers array and stick a one at the beginning. This is a common trick that makes the math for the range queries a bit cleaner, as it helps us handle cases where the range starts at index zero. Then, we just loop through the powers array once, calculating each prefix product based on the previous one. Now, look how fast the query loop is. There's no inner loop anymore. For each query, we just grab two values from our pre-computed array. The numerator, which is the prefix product up to the right index, and the denominator, which is the prefix product up to the spot before left. Then we use power to find the modular inverse of that denominator. The third argument, the modulus, tells power to do this special modular math. Finally, we multiply the numerator by this inverse and take the modulo to get our answer. It's incredibly efficient. So let's compare them. The first, direct approach takes about log n time to set up, but then each of the q queries takes another log n time. The total time is roughly q times log n time edge i. The second approach also takes log n time to do its pre-computation. But then, each query is answered in constant time, or big O of 1, cool, so its total time is just log n plus q. If you have a large number of queries, the second approach is a clear winner. Both methods use about log n space to store the arrays we build. So to wrap it all up, what are the big ideas here? First, whenever a problem talks about sums of unique powers of 2, your first thought should be binary representation. It's a very common pattern. Second, if you ever need to calculate sums or products over many different ranges in an array, think about prefix sums or prefix products. It's a fantastic way to optimize. And finally, if you're doing math with a modulo, remember that division is special, you need to multiply by the modular inverse instead. I hope that breakdown was helpful and made sense. If it did, please hit that like button, and maybe subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or a different way of solving it, drop a comment below, and hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.